Hey, what's up guys? It's Mario back again with another trade video. Now today I'm actually kind of happy and excited because I finally had a comeback trade on that Neo messed up that I had messed up trade that I had on Tuesday on this first red day. Now Neo did have another huge red day today. Uh, I did not short Neo, but I did short Lee, another uh, Chinese uh, electric vehicle uh, stock on a first red day. But I actually also ended up trading NEO on a bounce, on the uh, pivot level S2 bounce. Uh, so I'm very, very happy because it, it felt like I finally had a comeback on, those, on that miss on Tuesday. So I feel really good. I made pretty good money today. So I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, so hey, let's, let's just get started. Hey, don't forget to uh, smash that like button and uh, subscribe to this channel. If you find any value, let me, start, let me share my screen. All right, let's, let's get started. All right, so let me kind of cover uh, what's been going on with Neo overall. So Neo overall is, is extremely extended. Uh, this is Tuesday. Um, I did post a video on, on, on this trade on Neo that I made on, on, on Tuesday. I missed Neo on a first red day by a couple cents and it literally messed me up. Uh, but it actually had another first red day today, which is amazing. You know, back to pack first red days. It's actually very, very rare. Actually, this is the first time I've ever seen this. So it just goes to show how crazy Neo stock is. Um, so, so um, again, like I mentioned earlier, I did not short Neo on the first red day. I ended up shorting Lee. Uh, and look at this. Look at this beautiful chart right here, man. Look at this sell-off. <sighs> amazing, amazing sell-off. Now, uh, Lee had a, a earnings report today, um, and you know, looking at the chart as well, it's, it's overextended. So it was, it was an interesting day today, just to let you know, guys, because today I came in, you know, to the trading day with having nothing to, to kind of really trade. I literally didn't have, see, see anything that I liked. I did see XPEV, another Chinese electronic vehicle, uh, a stock. They had a nice move uh, the day before. So I was actually kind of looking for a first, uh, a uh, second day continuation, low hanging fruit long on XPEV, um, if it opened weak, you know, on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the midpoint. But again, uh, Lee had an uh, insane uh, earnings move, earnings report move, and it felt like it was exhausted. It was like over 20, up over 20%, you know, pre market. If you see this huge move already, and it just looked overextended to me and also Neil looked overextended as well. So I literally changed my, my bias from long to short on these, e on these Chinese EV stocks, just because the overextension was just too great. You know, especially uh, when I saw Neil that, you know, in terms of uh, standard deviation, when I looked at the, um, at the options uh, for, for, for the uh, expiration today, you know, earlier today, there was like a hundred percent implied volatility of like uh, one point something. They pretty much told me that this thing was already overextended. The range of the implied volatility was already hit. So it was already even trading above that. So for a reversal to happen was very, very likely. Um, so I was actually looking at that, you know, and then of course, looking at uh, Lee, uh, overextended as well, uh, you know, I felt like, you know, even though I knew that uh, I felt like Neo was going to pull back, I actually felt that, that Lee had just a, a better chart for me to short instead of Neo, because, you know, I did have, didn't have a good experience shorting Neo on first red day uh, last uh, Tuesday. I felt like Lee was going to be a better sympathy play on the short side, and that's pretty much what I did. So the reason why I decided to short uh, Lee, well, first of all, overextended, up over 20%. Again, Chinese uh, electronic vehicle stocks, they're all overextended. XPEV, Lee, Neo, they're all overextended in the, in the daily chart. Um, but what I really liked about Lee that made me short this versus uh, Neo was how this had this, this pattern, <clears throat> this uh, a head and shoulders pattern, pretty much, you could say. So here's the head and here's the shoulder. So this is the first shoulder and this is the head and this is the second shoulder. And literally, it topped out here at 39.50. On the, on the second shoulder. So when I saw that in selling, it started to sell, I of course made this little trend line right here. And, I, and my, my thought process was if it breaks below this pre-market low, I'm going to get in. Uh, now the first test, it bounced off that, you know, so I didn't have shares, right? Actually I did some shares to short right here, but on the second bounce, I'm like, dude, if it breaks below this, I'm going to get in. So I was able to get in a better uh, uh, price. So I did end up shorting, 
and um, I started to to kind of cover <clears throat> here at the at the uh, R1 pivot actually yeah R1 pivot level uh, covered some here and I was actually looking for a, a washout to to this level right here which is previous day's high of day uh, but it, it didn't quite get there right away so you know I decided to take another half you know on this little bounce and I did have a very tight stop because uh, I you know I, I more than made my risk and I wanted to keep that big gain because I kind of did go pretty big size on this uh, that I didn't want to lose none of that I didn't want it to kind of pull back and, and, and maybe pull back all the way to uh, R2 and then get stopped out and not make my big gain so I did have a tight stop and I and I stopped out and the rest and that was it now it did end up of course pulling back down again but at that point I was I'm, I was happy with that trade um, I went I sized up pretty good and, and right and when it broke on confirmation so I was actually pretty happy with this move you know I made more like more like over two dollars a share so on uh, big size so I was pretty happy you know over two dollars a share on big size you know uh, you know especially when you when we talk about penny stocks you know making two dollars a share is very very rare penny stocks so uh, but with large caps huge advantage huge advantage so that's why I love large caps. Even better if you if you trade options, you know, especially with the volatility. So that was Lee, pretty much. Now uh, Neo, of course, started to sell off with uh, with Lee and and, and Exbev. They all all the pretty much all the stocks in the Chinese electronic vehicles uh, sector or industry, excuse me, were selling off. So we're selling off. So Neo was was actually one of them as well. It actually bounced off S1, um, and when I of course covered on, on Lee, I actually went out to, uh, to my local uh, coffee shop to get some coffee and some breakfast. Uh, so I wasn't really paying attention. I was actually already done for the day. I actually came back uh, from, from, from the break and, and I, was, I was actually going to make this video on Lee and then I saw uh, Neo literally selling off going straight to S2 and I was like, dude, it's perfect opportunity because I mentioned this on Tuesday. I made another uh, trade video on Tuesday on Neo and how I missed that trade on the short side, but I noticed that on S2, there was this huge bounce. And I was like, dude, this time, I'm gonna go long on Neo on the S2 bounce. And um, and that's pretty much what I did. Now, I'm gonna be honest, guys, this is the first time I, I have traded this, uh, but I've noticed it so much that it has high probability of success. Uh, so I did mess it up, but I still made money on it. And I'm gonna explain that, how I messed it up. And, and, and pretty much common mistakes that uh, a lot of traders make, rookie traders, uh, make and I so I did make a rookie mistake by the way guys and I'm gonna explain that and hopefully some of you guys who are, are new to trading can kind of learn from this so my my thought process was like look the s2 is right here 4170 4180 um, I really think it's gonna bounce off this level now the reason why I didn't have a, a, a in order at 4180 is because I was looking at the level two and I noticed there was a huge bidder at 40 4107, 4107, like a hundred thousand share bidder at 4107. Uh, and now and that was pretty much a, a large market maker. Market maker was gonna get in at 4107. Now I did put an order at 4108, you know, to get in, but as price got closer to the level, that that bid disappeared. And I was like, wait a minute, why did it disappear? <laughs> so it kind of screwed me up. So I decided, you know what, let me let me not get in at 4108. Let's see if it bounces uh, with high volume. And if it does, I'm going to get in my first. This, now, this was a starter, by the way. This is not full size of starter share. So, and so it did help, you know, 4108, 40, that level helped, uh, and it bounced. So I almost wished I would have uh, held, held that uh, first order. Um, you know, it would have been like over like 30 cents a difference. And that's huge for, for traders uh, in terms of entry. But I was like, whatever, it's okay. I'm still in. And, I, and, and the rookie mistake that I made, I put my stop at low a day. So I was pretty much assuming this is going to be the, 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 the low a day. It's going to be the bounce area. I think this is it. You know, and it looked really good because we had some decent volume on that bounce. And it was below, of course, the, uh, the S1. Uh, excuse me. Uh, okay. There you go. And it was below the uh, S1 pivot level. So that's the reason why I felt like that was going to be the low day. Now I did put my stop and my thought process was like, look, if for whatever reason, this low day stops out, I'm just going to get into S3, you know, S3 pivot level. 
and get an even better fill, even better price, you know? But the, the thing about that was very, very difficult is, is if it doesn't go there and it holds, and it actually holds this, this, this uh, in, very important level on the daily chart, uh, it's gonna, it, it, you know, it, getting back in is not gonna be easy. And that's where, where a lot of uh, rookie traders uh, make that mistake of, you know, especially when they're trying to like, you know, find a bottom on, on a sell-off like, like this, this type of stock, like Neo, get stopped out and then it starts moving uh, the direction they were expecting. So I did get stopped out and I saw this candle and it started moving and I was like, dude, I just literally got stopped out by the market makers. But I did notice uh, 42 was a very, very important level and it kept, you know, stuffing in that level. And my thought process was if it breaks 42, I'm gonna go full size. It's not gonna be a starter. I'm gonna go full size. That's a confirmation to me that it's gonna reverse. So I actually went full size on break of 42 and it started to trend. Now I did have some orders to get out at 43. Um, and, uh, and this is where, where I, of course I could have done a lot better job. You know, I could have done a lot of better job if I was patient enough to, to hold. Uh, but I lost my patience because for one, again, this is my first time trading this type of uh, setup. Two, um, I, this is not even a trade that I was even expecting. It kind of just, it was kind of like a gift. And three, um, you know, I wanted to win in this trade. I wanted to make money in this trade. And as soon as I was green on it, I was like, dude, let me take, start taking some shares, taking some profits. You know, I mean, you can't go broke taking profits. Again, this is the first time trading. I took a little loss here in the first attempt. A second attempt, I'm already up, you know, let's take some profits, you know. I don't want it to, for whatever reason, especially when I noticed that 43 was kind of, you know, topping out. I don't want it for whatever reason to kind of just, you know, turn around and, and keep selling or whatever. And I was like, dude, you know, I started taking some profits when I noticed that 43 was kind of holding uh, and took some more here. And I had a really tight stop. And my thought process was like, okay, if it break, breaks below this, this uptrend, I'm out. And I did. So I was out, you know, and, you know, freaking uh, Neo is stuck and it, and it literally just, you know, uh, started trying it again. So <laughs> it literally kind of screwed me over. But like I said, guys, <clears throat> especially when you're trading new setups, you know, you're always not going to per trade it perfect. You know, if I had my initial entry at uh at 41, uh, what is the 4140s or even the 4108, it would have been a lot easier to kind of hold through this consolidation. But because I had a full size break of 42, it was, it was a little bit harder for me to hold, you know, because especially after take, making a, a, taking a red trade right here and then boom, full size going green, you know, I would felt like, you know what, based on how I trade it, let me take some profits and get out. If it, you know, it doesn't work out how I expect it, but it did keep bouncing. You know, my, my initial idea was to get in here and then sell at the, at the high forties or say in the 44, excuse me, but it didn't quite go as well. Again, this is where psychology plays into, it plays into your emotions, um, you know, sizing in too high. That's where everything kind of plays into your emotions guys. So, you know, this is my learning lessons. I did learn from this trade. Uh, don't make the rookie mistake of putting your stop on low a day. <laughs> Let it do its thing. If anything, add, add, add just add another, uh, especially your starter ad right here or add it, you know, have another position to add uh, because getting back in is so difficult, guys. Getting back in is so difficult. It would have been a lot easier, even with my starter, if I would have held um, my starter, I, I would have had no problem holding through this and even selling at 44, even here at 45. That would have been a lot easier than you know going all in, uh, going full size at, at break of 42, and then going to being too big. Of course, having my first loss, being too big here, and then going green on the trade. And then for me, I felt like, hey, I gotta take some profits. I don't want this to go red. So that's how psychology plays against you in a way. But overall, guys, again, this is my first time trading this type of trades. It's about the bounces, and I was very very happy with it. So for me, it was a win overall, and that's, that's pretty much it. It was kind of like a redemption trade, you know. For me, it was kind of like a redemption trade. 
Uh, and I just so you guys could see the the the, the chart on Tuesday, uh, and what I missed. This is pretty much it. This is pretty much what happened on Tuesday. Again, another. Uh, actually, let me show you guys the S2 and how how beautiful of a bounce it was. Here it is. See that S2 bounce right here. Beautiful, beautiful bounce. Um, and that's what I literally talked in my last video that if this happens again, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go long. So again, I did go long this time and I made some money. I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't quite uh, did a good trade on it. It was my first time trading this type of setup, but I'm happy I still made money and I did learn from uh, you know some of my mistakes. So hopefully you guys learned from this video, guys. Uh, again, is you know being a trader, you know there's so many things that they go in your head, especially when you're you're you're, you're sizing too big, or especially when you take a little loss at the beginning, that uh, they could play into how you trade. So always keep that in mind, guys. And I hope you you guys learned something from this video. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one, guys. Have a great weekend, guys. Peace.